They give you a function, like it's just one big long connected question. The endpoint is sketching, which is unsurprising, and we're going to use what we know about calculus to sort of chew our way through it. Okay? Let's begin with the first part. They simply ask you, what's the domain of this function? What's the domain of this function? Okay? Now, that's a bit of a, uh, it's a bit of a mouthful just in itself. So I want you to remember, because classic mathematician strategy, simplify the question first. If I just gave you this function, what would you, like we're very familiar with this, what would you say is the domain of that function? Yeah, x is positive. That's all I want, right? Because as we remember, you've got the asymptote there at zero, right? And there's our shape. I always think of domain in terms of shape rather than, oh, this function, that function. Some people just remember, oh, log functions only take positive values. If that works for you, then that's great. But I kind of always have a picture in my head. So if we know this about the domain for this function, right? We can take that and simply apply it to this, right? What we want is that piece in there, the x, right, the, the function inside that we're taking the log of, we want that to be positive, okay? So therefore, I'm going to say, for part a, to get the domain, what I want is for x squared on x plus 1 to be greater than 0. That's all it means, right? And you can throw anything in there to, like, say, for example, uh, we will get to the point where you can graph this. Not that you would ever be required to do that as an extension wants to, but just think about this for a second. We could do this, like if I asked you for the domain of this, what would you conclude about this knowing what we just said here? Yeah, I just want all the parts of that curve that are positive, right? So we know what that curve looks like. I mean, I know it goes the other way, but we're getting this kind of shape. So therefore, good morning, the log of this graph would be defined from naught to 180 degrees, and from 360 degrees to uh, 540. 540, right, and so on, okay? So the principle is not that crazy, okay? And you can apply it in all sorts of ways, even when it looks like, man, I didn't even to start. Okay, so we get this. What would you do to start solving this inequality? Any, any suggestions? Yeah, Doris. Do you turn both sides by x plus 1 squared? Okay, so a great strategy that I could take here is that I don't want to deal with this um, thing on the denominator because... It's going to be a hyperbola, so it's kind of gross, right? So I can multiply both sides by x plus 1 or squared, right? Why do I have to square it again? What's the significance of that? Okay, good. Yeah, it has to do with the sign of um, what I'm multiplying by, and more importantly, like the direction of this inequality. Ah, now, you will notice, you will notice, I, um, I have left the right-hand side at zero, that's because x plus one squared times zero is zero. Okay, good one. So, so that's a good reason why, like that's another sort of uh, feather you have for why you would want to do it by that, because it's fairly simple, okay? However, by saying this, from the first line to the second line, I've lost some information out of the question, right? Um, something is, is not equivalent between these two, What's not a good one? Good. The, because the first line has the fraction built into it, right? I can see right away from there that x can't be negative 1. Yeah? But when I go to this line, because the fractions disappear, just by looking at this line, I can't tell. So I've got to state that. And that's really significant because that affects the domain, right? Okay, so now that I've got this, this is a cubic. It's a fairly simple cubic. It has... Well, depending on what you think about it, it's either two or three roots. What are they? Zero and negative one, right? Um, zero, negative one is really a double root at zero. Yeah. So just really quickly, because what I want is where is this thing positive? Let's just do a quick sketch, right? The cubic. Because it's a um, the leading coefficient is positive, right? It's going to start down the bottom and it's going to go up to the top. So I'm getting this kind of shape. Are you happy with that? Yep. And that's just what a cubic looks like. There's my double root that I was expecting. Okay. So with another color, which parts of this am I interested in that are greater than zero? Yeah. X is greater than zero. Yep. This part's okay. Yep. And the area between x equals zero and x equals one. Very good. Okay. So what I've got is how will I state this? How will I state it? This first part, I'm going to go left to right, I'll try and go left to right, is negative 1x0, yep, 
and the second part is x is greater than zero. And of course, I have to say or, not and, or a comma, which doesn't mean anything. Why do I have to say or? Yes. Yeah, there's, there's no value of x that can satisfy both of these inequalities at the same time. They are mutually exclusive. So there you go, there's my answer, there's the domain. By the way, it's worth mentioning, um, we, at the beginning I said, like, what strategies could you take to go ahead and solve this? And we opted to multiply, turn this into a polynomial. We didn't have to, that was not mandatory. We could have gone from the first line, right? And you can think roughly about what the shape of this thing is, right? Just think about it without, without mucking about with it. What do you know about this graph? Think about it. What's the most obvious things that you can see? There's two obvious things. There's, a, there's an asymptote from the denominator at x equals one, right? There's an intercept, where is it? I'm giving you a clue by saying this before. It's gonna be at x equals zero, right? So at x equals zero, y is zero, so I'm going through the origin like that, okay? And then I'm guessing, now remember, what I'm interested in is domain, right? It's domain. So therefore, because I know that this is a hyperbola, Looks like it's going to have a oblique asymptote. I don't really care what the oblique asymptote is, though. That's irrelevant to me. All I need to know is there is one, so I get the general shape. See that? Um, it doesn't take that much imagination to see this. With more familiarity, you'll be able to look at this and think, oh, OK, that's roughly what I'm going to get. But if this comes to you quicker, then just go for it. You're still going to get this. I hope you can see this. You can read off here exactly the same. Do you see there's the negative one to zero? And then the zero on it. Okay. Right now, let's have a look at the derivative. Now, just for the sake of brevity, I haven't written on there. They actually say show that the derivative is blah, blah, blah. So there's our function, right? Now, humor me, in its current state, in its current state, what kind of knowledge do I need to know in order to differentiate this? Yeah, right now. Okay, number one, I need chain rule, because I've got a function <coughs> of a function. What else do I need to know? The derivative of the inside. Okay, good. So I'm going to have to do this guy in here because of chain rule. And that's a, that's a quotient, is it not? So I'm going to need the quotient rule. And then, of course, it's a polynomial, so you deal with that. Now, chain rule, quotient rule, both things that are, you know, they're going to make things quite complex, particularly quotient rule, right? Now, I can differentiate this through quotient rule. It took me... One, two, three, four lines, four lines, okay? Which is not too bad. Four lines is not unreasonable. However, I'm just going to write down the first line of it for you, just so you can <coughs> see why I'm not going to go down that path in a second, okay? So, let's think about this, okay? I'm just going to write down the first line. I'm not going to bother actually computing it, as you'll see why in a second. Chain rule tells me I do the inside, and then I'll do the outside, okay? Inside, then outside. So. It's to the inside, shall we? It's a quotient which looks to me like uh, v u dash minus u v dash all over v squared. Did I do it right? Does it look okay? I just did it in my head, so I may have written an error or two or something like that. I think that's it, right? There's the inside, and then I do the outside. Um, I usually write that as f dash on f because it's a fraction. I, I, I'm trying to avoid fractions on fractions. So I'm going to say divide by, and there's the f of x squared on x plus 1. Do you see why I don't like this way of doing it? Um, I mean, not to mention the fact that the reason why I'm pretty confident I can do this is because I did it not that long ago. So I've done this, right? But this part in here, boy, ha how many times have you come up with an error of your own? And you're like, why doesn't my answer match up? And quotient rule is responsible. Okay, because quotient rule is hard. There's so much you have to have in your brain. It's a very error-prone method. Method. Sometimes you can't avoid it, but when you can avoid it, you should. Okay. So how do I avoid it? Because you just make it x minus one times one. X minus one to the power of minus one. Well, then you've got product rule, but it's still going to end up being so like you. The net effect will be the same. <laughs> what else can we do with this? Yeah, good. In here, right, I can use log laws to break this in two, right? And in fact, it'll become even easier once I do this. So I've got log of x squared and I, because there's division, I subtract the other log, right? This is already a massive improvement. Massive, massive improvement. I can do a bit better than this. I can use log log again, right? Yeah, I can use the power law, so this is going to be 2 log x minus 
Okay, that looks much more manageable. Okay, um, no pro no quotient rule in sight. I do have to use chain rule, but hardly, like barely, right? So at this point now, I'm going to differentiate. That looks to me like it's going to be tron x minus one on x plus one. Okay, boy, I hardly even had to think, right? Uh, now, admittedly, what this does mean in addition is I have to get a common denominator, so I'll add these two together. It looks to me like that. But I think we generally agree. Adding algebraic fractions, substantially easier than doing question rule, right? Um, so this is 2x plus 2. When you subtract that x, you're going to get x plus 2. And I believe this is the result you're required to prove. Okay? So, we had to do, like, look at this. Remember I said to you before, this quotient rule, it took me four lines, right? But they're four hard lines. These are, this took me an extra line, but they were all easy. Like, they were quite minimal in terms of the effort we have to apply. Okay? 